Salvete Discipuli! Welcome back. Um, I'd like to start this second video by reviewing the case system, okay? And just covering the whole thing. So, as we look at it, okay, I hope that you can uh, take out a piece of paper and write down, follow along with me what I'm doing. Just that will re really reinforce for you um, how to do this. Okay, so if you remember how many cases we have, we have five, okay? Say in your mind what they are as I write them, okay? We have the nominative case, we have the genitive case, the dative, the accusative, and the ablative case. Okay, remember I told you there's two more, but we're not going to, to get into those right now, okay? So, um, Nouns have case, it has number, so we're going to have singular and plural, okay? There we go. All right, that's kind of review. Um, but I want to kind of um, review what the jobs are these cases are doing. So let me go to my purple this time. Okay, so remember, the nominative is the subject case, okay? So when you have the subject of a sentence, it's going to be in the nominative case, okay? The genitive is the possessive case, all right? And often with the genitive, I'm gonna put it on this side, we're gonna use the word of, okay? The desk of Tommy's, or Tommy's desk with an apostrophe. So for genitive, we can either use the word of, or we can use an apostrophe, okay, with an S. An apostrophe might be before or after, depending on singular or plural. Okay, dative will show indirect object. Okay, so when we have an indirect object, and we'll go fuller into that later, we could use the words two or four when we translate the dative case. Okay, um, I gave a cookie to Jenny. Okay, so Jenny would be in the dative case to Jenny, okay? The accusative case is our direct object case, okay? We don't really use any special words with that. And this ablative, oh, I love the ablative case because it is like um, a pot that we put lots and lots of things into as you go along in Latin, you'll see that. But at the beginning, we say it's the object of the preposition case. Um, and that's even a little confusing because also the accusative can be the object of the preposition, but just to help ourselves, we say object of the preposition for the ablative case, okay? And, and sometimes we say it's the in, by, with, from case, okay? That's just how this book is going to do things, okay? So each of these cases have a job that goes with it, and, and your grammar book shows you this very clearly. Okay, so let's take a different word that maybe you you declined yesterday or the day before. Okay, so why don't we do, let's see, what word are we going to do that you maybe did? Um, how about we do the word for gate? Okay, so we know, um, can you see far over here? You can, I'll put it up here, porta, porte. Okay, that's a word for gate. Um, I hope you can see that. So remember we take the first one and we put it right there, porta. Then we find our stem by dropping off the genitive singular ending, A-E, for a first declension. And that leaves us with port. Port, 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 port. <laughs> Lots of ports. Port, port. Port, port, and port again. Okay, and then we can add our endings. I'm gonna sing them again, because I love to sing. Get excited about Latin, okay? A, 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 um, A, 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 arum, is, as, is. Okay, so hopefully you declined all the words in the vocab just like that. Okay, so now let's, using our special words, let's translate these. Okay, I'm not gonna write them down. 
we're just going to do it together. Remember, Latin has no words for a or the, but we can add that. So I could say a gate, or I could say the gate for the nominative, or I could just say gate. Okay, let's just say the gate. Now, genitive, we're gonna use the word of, of the gate. Dative, to, for the gate. The accusative case, we'll just say the gate. And then for the ablative, we'll say in, by, with, from the gate. Okay, we can do the same thing with the plural. And we just add an S. The gates, or just gates, of the gates, to, for the gates, the gates, and in, by, with, from the gates. Okay, so that's kind of just a review of the case system. All right, now I wanna go over a little bit of exercise five to make sure that you understood what you were doing with exercise five. That's when we already are starting to translate. So I'm gonna turn in my book, and I would ask that whatever we're doing, you would be in your purple book and your grammar book in the same places. So turn to page 11 in your purple book and page five in your grammar book, and let's look at a, just a couple of these, okay? So let's look at number one. I'm gonna get my black pen because I know it shows up better, okay? Maria orat, okay? So Maria orat. And you remember we talked about subject verb agreement. Here we have a verb in the singular, okay? And indeed, Maria, no macron, this is in the nominative case. So that is our subject, okay? So we could translate, we always go subject verb, Mary prays. Okay, so hopefully that's how you translated this. Mary prays. Okay, let's look at number two. Okay, number two is now te orant. And you can see now the verb ends in NT. Plural verb. And therefore, you see our subject is plural. So again, we're going to translate subject verb. The sailors, because this is plural, pray. Okay, let's look at number three. Okay, number three is, uh, no, well, let's do number four. Number three is very, we, it's very similar. So we'll go to number four, okay, because this adds something new. So we have now, te, non, orant. Okay, so you've just added an adverb here. Okay, same sentence as this, only now you have this known. The sailors do not pray. Okay, you, you can't really say sailors pray not. So you have to add the, the helping do. Okay, the sailors do not pray. Okay, now um, let's do this one, number five. Vident. an NT, right? Where's the subject? So if there's no subject there, you're going to take the subject from the verb. And when it's NT, the subject is they. If it's T, the subject is going to be he, she, or it. And you can just choose one. You don't have to write them all down. So the answer to number five is going to be they see okay um, let's see if there's another one like that um oh let's do number 10 this will be the last review when we do known or rot okay so i don't see a subject i just see an adverb and a verb so where am i going to get my subject that's right from the verb so t means what he uh, you could also do she or it he, remember, does not pray, okay? So remember, sometimes you'll have a subject, but then sometimes you'll have to get the subject from the verb if there's not another stated subject. Okay, well now we're going to add another part of this sentence, okay? And I want you to stop Okay, I want you to stop the video and I want you to read page 13 and 14 in your Henley text, your purple text. Please read pages 13 and 14, which is going to talk about the direct object and then start the video when you've read that.
Okay, so let's just talk about a little bit about English, okay, and what a direct object means in English. So in English, the direct object receives the action of the verb. For instance, um, I love God. Okay, I is the subject. It's the person doing the action in the sentence. The verb is love. Okay, that's the action. And who's receiving the action? God. I love God. Okay, so the direct object receives the action of the verb. And in Latin, we put the direct object in the accusative case. And it will have accusative case endings. Okay, um, so... Um, in the first declension, if you look at your grammar book, you're going to see the direct object endings, accusative case, am for the singular, as for the plural. Okay, so let's just look at the example that they give us. Okay, here we go. Um, so I'm going to write this up. Now te mariam. Laudant. Now Latin is like doing a puzzle, okay? Because word order sometimes is mixed up, okay? So they don't always put the subject first. And everything's not an, an always, it, it often is. Okay, often the subject is first, but not always. So the key to Latin is in looking at the endings. Okay, so we're just, I'm just gonna underline these endings right now so I can evaluate them and see what's happening. Okay, because I've gotta figure out what jobs these nouns are doing in this sentence. So I always look at the verb first and I say, oh look, the verb ends in NT, that's plural. So I'm looking for a plural subject. Now remember, the subject is going to be in the nominative case. So, which of these two are in the nominative case? That's right. The sailor, uh, now te, A-E ending is nominative plural. Okay, so that could be the subject. And then this A-M is what? Right, accusative case. And we know the job of the accusative case is the direct object. Okay? So now, even though this will be all met in different orders, okay, when you go to translate into English, this is what I want you to do. You, I don't want you to read left to right. I don't want you to go sailors marry praise, okay? In our translation, we want to go subject, verb, direct object. And I'll probably say this to you 200 times. Subject, verb, direct object. So we're going to say the sailors, now I'm gonna to jump to the verb, praise, who do they praise? What's our direct object? The sailors praise Mary, okay? So that's how we do direct objects, and it's all about the endings, okay? And you wanna memorize the endings of this first declension to help yourself know them without having to look back, okay? The other thing we're going to work on is the possessive case. Okay, so let me erase this and we're going to talk about what that looks like. Okay, so if you remember, possessive case is going to be in the genitive case. Now, possessive has to do with belonging. Okay, so like we'll talk about, um, let's talk about the gate. Okay, we could say maybe a sailor has a gate. So we could say the gate of the sailor, okay? Another way to say that same thing would be to say the sailor's gate. Do you see the apostrophe is before the S because there's only one sailor. Okay, the gate of the sailor or the sailor's gate. Now we'll put this in the nominative case. Okay, gate, porta. Okay, but this of the sailor, this of thing, is going to be in the genitive case. So I need to take the word sailor and, and get it in the genitive case. A, A, okay, porta, nauté, okay? 
the gait of the sailor. And indeed, it is also the same way sailor's gait is also porta naute, okay? So we could also do, let me just make this plural, okay? I'll keep gait singular, but now I'm gonna say gait of the sailors. Okay, sailors are now plural, or the sailors, ooh, look, the apostrophe's on the outside now. The sailor's gait, okay, that gait belongs to a whole bunch of people, okay? So it's still, gait is still singular, porta, but now we need the plural genitive, or genitive plural. So, a, 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 um, a, 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 room. Okay, that's your genitive plural. So we'll go now, tarum. Okay, the gate of the sailors. Okay, and we could have made it gates. Okay, and then we would have just made this plural, nominative plural. Okay, so you could have, this would be kind of funny. If I wanted to say, can you see if I go up here? I think you can. Gates of one sailor, okay? Watch this, porte naute. Because remember, nominative plural is ae for gates, but genitive singular is ae too. So could it be the sailors of the gate? It can be, it can be. And so Latin's like a puzzle, you start figuring out what's what, okay? So this is, this is kind of what you're going to work on today. The, direct object case and, which is the accusative case, and the possessive case, which is the genitive case. Okay, you're going to do exercises six. You're going to do exercise eight. And if you have time, go back and do exercise seven too. That's Latin to English. So that will challenge you. And then we'll come back and review this all a little bit later. Valete discipuli.